I love this for those who have to live with Parkinson's with this one. They call it an exosuit. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. It's a robotic exosuit. And literally with somebody with Parkinson's because one of the symptoms of Parkinson's outside of the shaking is that while they're walking, they stop. Mm -hmm. They like freeze and they don't move. And this contraption, this exosuit that they're calling it, is really something that's around their waist and their knees, and it keeps them moving forward. So when they stop, this exosuit will give you a nudge to keep you going forward and not stopping with those who have to live with Parkinson's. Right. So it would almost be like, I mean, I guess I would liken it to someone that was with you that gave you a little bit of a nudge to move forward. Maybe it works in the same way. I don't know if there's, I don't want to say a charge or something that sort of makes the muscles or gives a signal to the brain. I don't know about that, but it's just that gentle nudge. You know, Michael J. Fox um, has Parkinson's disease and he's been very open and creating all this there awareness. There is a whole docu-series right now on him on Apple TV. Yeah. It's fascinating to watch, especially how he lives this out in front of everybody. Well, and I think, you know, because of his platform and uh, he's been, you know, loved because of Back to the Future and the Family Ties show and all this, he's able to bring so much awareness to this disease, help raise money, get research, and this may be one of the byproducts of all of that. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Manatees, hundreds of them. Now, I don't know if you've ever visited Florida and seen a manatee. It's really neat to see manatees up close. I lived in Florida for a good chunk of my life, at least half my life. Mm. I lived in Florida and I moved here 23 years ago. So manatees is a thing. Now, they are so cold right now in central Florida that in Crystal River, which is near Ocala, there's hundreds of them on the riverbank, and they're close together trying to keep their themselves warm. Smart, number one. Very smart. Very smart. Some of them are stuck, and so there are scuba divers um, and people with animal control that, number one, are trying to help them and keep them contained. No, It's against the law. Nobody can touch them. Oh, right. And so they're going to help navigate all them back out once it starts warming back up. Poor babies. Right? You know, and then they're called the sea cow. I mean, they're large, right? So, and they move very slowly, and they like to just, you know, eat, I guess, the vegetation that's in the corners and things. They're very kind and very gentle. They seem like, as large as they are, they could probably do some damage, but that's not their nature. I, I saw one, I didn't know what it was, I, that was taken over, <laughs> you know, off the shore. When, when you were, we were vacationing? Yeah. yeah. And I'm watching it, I'm like, what in the world? And then realized it was a manatee. And they're so beautiful and just majestic. And, they are. Yeah, so brought some tears, but they're cold. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Okay, so these leggings, and I just ordered some off Amazon because, you know, I'm trying to work out a little more, but I didn't order these because these shock you. There's a new company that has leggings that will shock you. You mean literally? Literally. Not figuratively, shock to, you. Why? Because it stimulates the muscles and it gives you more health benefits. And so it makes the muscles, from what they say, kind of uh, work harder. And to me, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> my husband would have a remote control. That girl needs to work out. <laughs> so, okay, I think I get it. Because there used to be back in the day this thing you'd strap around your waist and it was for your abs. And it would shock your abs to work out while you're just sitting there at your desk and typing on a computer. I, I forgot not. what it was called, but that's that basically is what this sounds like in a legging. Yeah, but and it's not. It's honestly, it's not like you can dial it up to ten or anything like that. Oh, it's just <laughs> right. Okay, uh, but it's just a mild shock from what I understand. But it's really to reach the muscles and uh, bring them to their full. Potential. Yeah, it contracts them. Yeah. Little pricey. I think they're like over. Of course, if you buy Lululemon, they're going to be, you know, pricey. Is that who as makes well. these no, things? No, 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 no. But I'm saying they're probably about that price. A little under $200, I think, is the price of the leggings. For so. legging? Yeah. Is it called legging or leggings? Uh, well, I'm from the South, so it's legging. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Ew. 
Uh, no, don't. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Mm, thin okay, mints. Listen, <laughs> she just lifted up her arm and smelled her pit. Well, thin mints. No, not really. I have not used this, but Native. Native is a brand that I think Target will sell. They are now coming out with uh, Girl Scout cookie deodorant, body wash, shampoo, conditioner. Ew. Yeah. And it's not like it's put out by Girl Scouts. It's in conjunction with the Girl Scouts. And so, like, your your literal deodorant will smell like a Thin Mint or a Caramel Delight or a shortbread. Why? Or a <laughs> couple of things here. Number one, I don't want to smell like food. Not really. Period. I don't want to smell like food. How? And, and if you put that on, won't you be hungry all day? Because you're smelling a cookie in your armpit? So, I don't think so because, like, we've had candles at, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving that smell like pecan waffles or sugar cookie. And it doesn't really make me want to well, go eat those listen, things. Listen, some of those things smell disgusting to me because they, they try do. to smell like food. And they're super sweet. So, I, I don't... I don't eat them. I don't know if they're sweet. No, they... No, but you smell it. Like, it just smells like you're you're smelling burnt sugar or something sometimes. <laughs> wow, well, but, but that I is... certainly want to put that in my armpit. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I am amazed how many people in my life don't know what this is. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. What's that? This gum. What gum? Fruit stripe gum. It's we. I, I think it's got a zebra on it. It's like zebra stripe, and it's all these different flavors. I just saw in the news, first, I've never heard of this gum, but I just saw in the news they're discontinuing it, and I guess I know why. Nobody knows what this gum is. Fruit stripe. I was raised upon some fruit stripe. Like, it's the gum that you put in your mouth. Oh, my goodness. Oh. And then 30 seconds later, no flavor at all. No, I know double mint, but I've never heard of fruit stripe until just recently when I heard they're going out of business. I'm like, oh, okay, no wonder why they're going out of business. Nobody knows who they are. Oh, my goodness. A huge part of your childhood is missing because you didn't have zebra stripe gum. Of my childhood? Yes. Well, you don't necessarily, I would say, you wouldn't chew it as a you know 30-year-old necessarily. It's Why? not your go-to. Because I think by the time, at least for me, talking about myself, once I hit a certain age, then it went to the double mint or the big red. Oh, big red, yes. But fruit stripe, it's kind of a kid thing. Because it's striped? No, because it's like all these fruity flavors and it's just Oh, a ton fun. of sugar, huh? That's what you it know, sounds like. I don't know because I haven't chewed it in years and years. Probably. So you say this is a thing. Fruit stripe is a thing. 100%. 150%. They're going out of business because a lot of people haven't heard of them. At least I haven't. Ninja, our producer. Ninja, I'm wondering if you've heard of this. No. Jake. I have. I actually grew up on it. Thank you. Okay, so two people I know. Thank you. Well, that's half. Of that's it. 50% of In this room. room. Of this, this room. This room, wow. You sound like the official people that take stats. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I've never heard of Fruit Stripe gum and there are those that swore by it growing up, evidently. I had, I had no idea. The thing's going out of business. That's why <sighs> all of a sudden it's in the news, the fruit stripe gum. But uh, it's going away. But others are like, dude, no. Dude, no. I grew up on this stuff. I absolutely begged. Please, please. Well, Jolene texted 800-447-7234, and she said it's the best. As kids, we would wipe down the corner store gas pumps and clean the parking lot to get this gum. So I guess they were paid wow. in the fruit stripe gum. Well, that's quite the deal. I think so, too. I wish I could go sweep up a store so I could get some chips. <laughs> Two hours of work, 30 seconds of flavor. Uh, <laughs> Teresa, zebra gum, she said it makes great window shutters if you're doing gingerbread houses. So wait, so there's fruit stripe gum and zebra gum? It's the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the mascot's... Zebra, and I think we just started calling it. Oh, that makes zebra sense. Gum, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, this is Kim at 800 447 7234. What's up, Kim? I just wanted to call and thank Liz for being your partner on the radio because I've been listening the last few days and you, you don't really know a lot about some stuff. And I'm going, What's wrong? So I think that Liz is just really helping you out a lot with the fruit. Right, Absolutely. On. Hey, when it comes to stupidity, I'm as smart as the stupidity I, comes along. Oh, I just listen to y'all every morning, all day long. So, um, yeah, I thought it was 
kind of funny, so I just wanted to call and tell y'all that this morning. Thank you so much. You are so much fun. Thank you. You have a good weekend. Thank you. Y'all too. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I believe Friday has arrived. And <laughs> after this week, American Airlines with that door plug oh. weather the way that it has been. It's time for an I Believe Friday as we get into the weekend. Yes, it is. I believe this weekend is going to be sunny. I believe it. After today, it's going to be sunny and beautiful, and we can get out and do some things. Jake, I Believe Friday. What are you going to believe? I believe. uh, (laughs) Here we go. He's thought about it so well. I know. Um, I believe I get lots of sleep. There you go. Hey, I Believe Friday Ninja. I believe I'll finally put Christmas decorations away. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this yes. weekend would be it, huh? Tara, she had her birthday yesterday, but I think her birthday celebration is this weekend. She said, I believe I will have a great birthday celebration. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I believe. Here come in all the open mics from the My His Radio app for I Believe Friday. I believe I'm going to have a great pizza and macaroni. I believe that I'm going to have a blessed, awesome, and safe weekend. I believe I'm going to finally start feeling better this weekend. I believe there's a promotion coming up at my job and God's going to bless my family abundantly. I believe that my children will either fight over Fortnite or will fight me over Fortnite this weekend. I believe salvation for my daughter. I believe there's a promotion coming up at my job and God's going to bless my family abundantly. I believe the semester is going to be excellent. I'm going to do my classes for my bachelor's and master's program and work full time and I'm not going to have any problems. I'm going to do well. I'm going to show God's glory by the excellent grades and work that I'm going to do for class. In Jesus' name. Come on now. Woo! There's an I Believe Friday. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. There are some apartment buildings that just don't have anybody in them anymore. It's Isn't like, crazy? yeah, some, some, you know, they, 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 they don't occupy them. Nobody's running it. So there's this organization that's taking some apartment buildings and some old hotels and flipping them into apartments mm-hmm. that is affordable for people to live in who don't have the opportunity to live somewhere. And so they're taking these hotels they're flipping them into little one-room studios yeah. for the most part. There's a couple of suites that are in them. People are moving in, and that is their place to live where they wouldn't have had a place to live. I lived in one of these at one point. Um, it, it was an older motel, and they had taken it, and they flipped it, and I had a corner unit, so mine actually had two rooms in it, um, and it was affordable. I think mine mm, might have been like $450 a month. That's been a few years ago, but still. So this organization in Raleigh is doing this to all of these hotels, and they're now apartments where people can afford them. The rent is like well under a grand Which a is month. good. Which is very good for apartments. Have you seen apartments lately? Yes. Oh, my word. So, because I have some older kids that are out of the house, and when they were looking at apartments, I'm like, 1800 bucks a month for how many roommates do you need to survive? Well, that's my, one of my sons is thinking about, you know, the next step is going to be that moving out. And he's thinking, well, I'm going to need three roommates. There's going to be four of us. Just about. Just to try to make the rent and pay for the streaming because, you know, that's going to be number one important. And the car payments and the insurance and all the things. So, Ooh, adulting. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Okay, finally, there is a Bucky's coming to North Carolina off of I-85. North Carolina. It's going to be, I mean, right smack between Goldsboro and Raleigh. Oh, so it's yeah. like Menbane City or something like that something off of like 85. That. And it, the thing's going to be huge. 600 parking spaces, 120 gas pumps, and I'm sure every one of them will be full to capacity. 600 parking spaces? I know. That's a lot. They're going to hire about 200 people to work at this Bucky, so a lot of people are going to have jobs. And it seems like, you know, they put that little sign out in front of Bucky's about their hiring. Seems like they have pretty good benefits, so those are some good jobs I hope are coming to town. Right? Yeah, Yeah, but Bucky's is so big. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The first time I went in one, I was in awe. I never thought a gas station could do this to people. <laughs> Suck them right in. Cray cray. You walk in, you're stuck for a couple of hours. Only if you you're know? with my mama. That's a that's a good spot for a Tesla charge up your car. <laughs> it really right? Is. If you had one, I don't have one. <sighs> but I see them there, I'm like, you know, 
I don't know how long it takes to charge one of those puppies, but I don't either. But Bucky's is like a good stop because you can be there for hours. Yeah. My mom walks in, and the first time I took her to the one in Myrtle Beach, and she just, she was talking to everybody. She was looking at the bakery. Oh, my goodness. And just everywhere. I was like, we have to leave. And all the stuff you can buy, you buy a grill at Bucky's. You can buy a tent. You can buy a bathing suit, a towel, a stuffed animal. At a gas station. Home decor. It's not a gas station. Well, I don't know if you noticed this, but when you drive in, there's a sign that says that semi trucks, unless they're delivering to Bucky's, semi trucks are not allowed there. I did not know that. Yeah, and if you if you notice, if you're stopping at one like today, take a look around. Unless it's a delivery, there's not semi traffic because they they go off to the Loves and all the other ones. They literally have a sign that says. No semi-trucks in the parking lot. Didn't know that. Probably because I'm always looking at the little dog park that they have, and I'm like, oh, cute puppy. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Bro, Timmy, when he was in ninth grade, check this out, ninth grade, high school, he was on Jeopardy. Mm Mm-hmm. And did pretty well. He was just invited back. He's a sophomore now at UNC, and he made quite the comeback the other night on Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's doing so well. And he's grown so much. It's just, you know, if you put the two pictures side by side, you can see huge age difference. Really only a couple of years. Well, he was but, in ninth grade. It yeah. looked like he was just up to Alex Trebek's shoulders sure. at that time. And now he's with Ken Jennings. That's and the guy's he, name, he right? towers yeah. over that guy. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but, yeah, he's doing a really good job. And they called it a dramatic comeback because, you know, he didn't win the whole thing when he was there before. But uh, now he's back. And being on it twice... As as a ninth grader, number one, he's smart because there's no way I can survive on Jeopardy. I mm-hmm. mean, forget that. Yeah, well, you know, they ask questions and you're just like, what now? Like, I don't even understand the words that you just said. Yeah. How am I going to answer that? Rob and Liz. His morning crew. News radio. <sighs> Man, now they've gone and did it. You know. They've gone and they've done it and they should. Well, maybe they sh- I'll keep my op- opinion out of this. I want to say they shouldn't have, but they did. There is a completely now in California, it's about to open, it's an AI-powered restaurant. And so you're going to be served by, and and the cooks are all robotic. Do they understand when you say light dressing? You know what I mean? Can they understand? (laughs) What if there's a power plip? (laughs) Way too much ketchup on the burger. Right, so are there humans at all that are programming? Somewhere, somehow, some, there's got to be human intervention somewhere. However, you go in, you make your order, and AI will take your order, and AI will cook the thing. They call it Flippy. So Flippy's going to flip your burger <laughs> for you. <laughs> At least he's got a yeah. cute little nickname. Yeah, and it doesn't look like human beings. I mean, it really looks like robotics things that are at you can you can watch your burger being cooked by an AI. Yeah, it's not C3PO, you know, flipping your burgers like it's an actual like machine. Um so no. I'm not I'm not down with this yet. I've seen Terminator too many times. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry. I don't think this is Skynet. But Wow. I'm just saying, I don't want Arnold Schwarzenegger from the first one making my burger and slinging it at me. You know, 3,000 miles an hour. Wow. (laughs) Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Forteza, she's actually inspiring me a little bit. She's a blogger, and she's talking about the fact that she only has five outfits, and that's what she wears basically every single day. And I'm like... Doesn't that get boring? Now, if you have the five right outfits, I mean, you can make a hundred different outfits out of the pieces, you know, but she wears basically the same clothes every single day. I don't see anything wrong with that. I do that. I don't. I don't. No, she doesn't. Liz, when you see Liz, she is classy. She's got the earrings. She's always dressed in classy. It's amazing. I just... Put on the jeans and the same shirt, and I feel like I wear the same thing. Like I have my Monday outfit and Tuesday outfit, you right. know. Well, and I see that my my the men in my life do the same thing. My husband, my boys, they wear the same track pants or track shorts. You know, cat, a pair of khakis in the mix, and if they're going to church or whatever. Listen, but. Steve Jobs, when he was alive, you know, the iPhone guy, he wore the same type of outfit every single day. It's like a turtleneck, black turtleneck, yeah. and the jeans, jeans. and that was it. 
See, I, I like variety. Like I, today I might feel like a sweatshirt because I'm feeling a little, I don't know, a little more cash. And then the next day I really, really, really want to dress up. And so, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong I with just, either way. I just, I'd rather just have one type of outfit and just keep on that. Well, what this lady says uh, in her blogs is it takes all the stress out of it. You know what you got. You make yeah. sure it's clean. Come on. And that's what you're wearing.